All right, so here we are at Bill's Family Restaurant. This is one of our hangouts here in Augusta, Georgia. It's where all the locals hang out, really literally. And I'm here with my husband, Dean. Hi, Dean. Can you see yourself? And he's been here since 1961. Yeah, that, that's the year Dean was born. So you've been coming here since you were a kid. And uh, it's as old as you. Uh, Bill no longer lives, but he, he there is a new owner who's been who was one of the regulars at the old place, right? And yep. anyway, so Vlogmas Day Two. Dean, what is your question about Christmas? Do you see yourself? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What is your question about Christmas? I, I'm doing a video. I'm answering a question about Christmas every day until December 25th. What's your question? What do you like right here? Pardon? What do you like right here? No, I mean about Christmas, not what I like. It's about like what is your, what did you ever wonder about Christmas and never never found out? There's no question you have. Uh, I wasn't prepared. I was thinking Dee would have a question for me. Um, and you know, I didn't study up to get the answer, so I guess I'm going to have to go home and like find out what people are asking about Christmas and come up with a question because you don't have one. And I need to make this an informative video. I have to really answer a serious question. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Number one. And look. Number two. Number one. <laughs> Together, we are number one. We are the number one team. Team number one. Right? And all other, all other teams follow us. Okay, we are number two. Number one. Huh? Big rig one. Uh -huh. Oh, that's what this the, the one is. Yeah, they are legitimate, bona fide army jackets. And Dean just happened to have two of them. <laughs> How long have you had these jackets? Four or five years. Four or five years. I thought you had it like longer than that. Four or five years. I've known you four or five years. You had them before I you ever met me. How long? They like 10 a, years? They had crazy sale at Rogue and Jail. <laughs> at where? Army Supply it Shop? Was at, it was at the mall. One of the stores in the mall. And they had these jackets, which went for $200. <laughs> He marked it down to twenty dollars. Oh, excellent! It was over at Augusta Mall, right? Is that the name of it? Oops. Our camera. And it said, "You say a hundred cents." All right. Well, <laughs> I thought you'd have it for some special. Maybe I should ask somebody if they have a question. I don't want to make a big spectacle, you know. People kind of know I'm an outsider here, and I just have to keep kind of as low profile as possible. Otherwise, they think I'm some troublemaker, you know. It's the South. They know Dean. But, you know, I'm the, I'm the new uh, uh, Yankee wife. <laughs> I'm the third wife too, so you know. I mean, did your other wives come here with you ever? Very rarely, but you know, I'm the third Yankee wife. Uh, they were Yankees too, weren't they? Well, no, not the last one, but one before was from California, like me. I, I grew up up north, but I was born in California and I lived in California for like 18 years, and she was also from California, the first and one. She spent her whole life. And she married a damn cowboy. 
Right. He was crazy. Well, I was born there. He was crazy as hell. I was born there and I lived a whole lifetime there. So, you know, I lived there a long time. Uh, but you kind of consider her. What do you think about Californians again? Lands of fruits and nuts. Yeah. He doesn't have a lot of respect for us Californians. But he he makes an exception for me, right? Because okay. I'm not too too fruity and spacey. kooky and spacey. And I, I might have a little flavor of that, but it's not serious, right? right. Okay, so I'm going to go home and finish this video so I can make it informative and true to my, my intention to answer a Christmas question every day until December 25th. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna film our food when it arrives, and then I'll continue this at home. Hmm? Say hello. Hello. This is the new This is the new owner. Yeah, I'm the new owner after 25 years. 25 years. <laughs> they finally let me in. They left the door unlocked. Let me in. <laughs> yeah, you. We, so you and the owner, you guys were friends, and you came here as a customer. Yep. And then you said, "I like this place so much, I'm gonna buy it." Yeah. Yeah, I did it. That was exactly what happened. That was the best. That was the best decision you ever made. Oh, he, he must have been 80 something years old when he died. Uh, Mr. Bill was about 32, 33. That's what I Wow. And he'd come here every day and just sit down and park. Yeah. Go around and hug all the women. <laughs> oh, yeah? He was a ladies' guy? Oh, Mr. Bill was passed away 14 years. 12? 2008, he passed away. Oh, wow. Just before, I, just before I came to town. He's 83. I, this, is, uh, this is his brother in law. Oh, okay. Wait, who's Mr. Barger? No, Mr. Barger. Oh, okay. You see him. They come here twice a week. Uh, Virgil. Virgil. That's his brother in law. Yeah. He's, our, he's, he, he's, um, he's always next door to us. Uh, he's our, he goes out with our neighbors. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, uh -huh. Virgil's his brother in law. I didn't know that. He's married with his real sister, uh, Anne. I didn't know that. Now, this one wrote back right here. So, his brother, in the pictures he's shown me of his brother, that's that's Bill? No. No. Uh, oh, his brother in law. Brother in law. Small world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, this is kind of small town. You right, know, I mean, even though Augusta is a city, it's, it's, it's like a small town. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Miss Jones, Yeah. Who would have thought that? I didn't know Virgil was. We just wait why he comes out here all the time. Mm -hmm. That's why, yeah. He's running a place. Yeah. Just Kathy. Eighty-three years old. I think he's I guess it, it's the so it must be the brother of his former wife who died. Because he goes out with Carolyn now, who's our neighbor. And it's like they're married, but they're not. And that must have been his wife's brother. The wife yeah. that died. Right, right. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. You okay? Everything good? Life is short. You see that? Let me see it tonight. Life is short. You dessert first. Right. That's the... Words to live by. Words to live by. Okay, what do you like about Christmas? Hmm? What do you like about Christmas? Dean has a question for me. What do I like about Christmas? Maybe that's what today's video will be about, huh? Maybe that's what, maybe it doesn't have, I said I was going to change it up if I felt like it. So, what, what is your question once more time? What do you like about Christmas? What do I like about Christmas? I like, well, growing up as a child, I, Christmas was the most exciting holiday because I really truly believed in Santa Claus and he was magical and exciting and 
I kind of saw him as God, you know. Yeah. And he came to town like once a year, right. and that, and yeah. he, he he never he never ceased to amaze, and he had all kinds of surprises and goodies, and I I just it was such a thrill to. It was so exciting for me as a child. And you know, I'm sure Daddy uh, helped to nurture that. I mean, he, you know, he was, he was Santa Claus, he used to say. And, and I was going to marry Santa Claus, and that was you. And that was the plan. See, this is really, this is Santa. I married Santa Claus. Uh, we, we, we have, I have a website called imarriedsantaclaus.com. And I, it just sits there. I haven't really, you know, loaded up the pictures. It hasn't been a really exciting Christmas for us yet. You know, I, I don't have that thrill and excitement for Christmas anymore. As an adult, you know, it's a child's fantasy and excitement until I get my money and can uh, bring joy to children everywhere. You know, through you because you're the guy. That, you know, I'm not a man, so you know, in our culture, it's a man that is Santa Claus. <clears throat> you know, I'm Mrs. Claus. Oh, here's our beautiful. Wait, wait. I'm trying to see if it's on camera. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. you. What kind of jelly? Uh, strawberry. Uh, yeah, he like he likes strawberry. Which one? I I I'd like to eat any. So okay. thank you. Thank you. So let me make sure I got this on camera. Mm -hmm. oh, no. This is my salmon cake. I love this salmon cake. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Um, and these, these home fries. Uh, my father, Denny, used to. Okay. Uh, my father, used, my father, Denny, used to make them just like this, and he used to make the salmon cakes too. And of course, onions were always added. I love the onions. Um, and you know, salmon's really good for me. So I vote, I, since I was a child, I, I was. Um, and for everybody else too. What's that? Salmon's good for you and everybody else. Right, it is, but especially me, I guess, because of the way my, um, my you know, my I'm chemically made up that I, you know, I. First of all, I'm, I'm, I have O positive. I'm an O positive uh, blood type, meat eater, and um, I don't know. I think it's really good for the brain. Uh, that's what Daddy. That's why Daddy. I mean, I'm not talking about Dennis, Denny, my father that I grew up with. It was not at all nurturing. Um, but he, but he, but it was Daddy, Jose Toda or Bert Fields, who got Denny to cook salmon and. Me, you know, do things like this so that I would get the nutrients my brain needed to develop fully to its full capacity. Mm. <laughs> I think it was so nice that. It, um, what's your name again? I always, I'm really bad with names. Are you bad with names too? I forget her. I mean, we know her so well. <laughs> but they don't have name tags here, so it's harder for me to remember. And we see her out in the community sometimes. But I forget her name. And that was very nice of her to ask me what I wanted. I like that. Nice. People usually forget the woman, don't they? Okay, so what do I like about Christmas? You want to know, huh? Right. Well, I like making children as happy as I remember being when I would, you know, think Santa was coming to town. That's what I love about Christmas, that joy. And maybe one day soon I'll, I'll feel that same joy I felt when I was a child. You know, when I get my money. 
I'll be like a little child, Bean. I think I will. What do you think? Yeah. How you feel? Do you feel like Santa Claus? Or what do you feel like? Huh? I guess so. Because Dean is making it possible, you know, if I wasn't married to Dean, I wouldn't be able to get my money. Because on Earth, you know, supposedly women don't have any rights. We're, I mean, because the old world laws are still in effect, because nobody's changed them for eternity. Um, on Earth, you know, supposedly women don't have any rights, right? Or, or like cattle that you purchase on the, you know, on the secret market, top secret market, and you know, it's women who fund the men, you know, in reality, because you know, in Vega, it's the reverse opposite. Women are in control. Women are the leaders. Everything revolves around women, not men. And so that's why the women are the ones who fund the men. And that's that's always been the truth, and that's why men want to purchase the women so that they can have their money. And women don't know they have any money. They don't know they have any rights. We're the ones who empower the men here on Earth, and they take all the credit. I mean, Santa Claus is a man with beard, not me. <laughs> I've got the belly over here, but you know, <laughs> that's literally what it is, right? That is very figuratively what it is. I, I've got the big belly full of, full of you know, I've got, the, I've got the big pot of gold in my belly, and, and yeah. So yeah, I mean, we're Dean and I are the physical embodiment of the truth, right? The big pot of pot of gold is in, in the woman here. The belly is <laughs> the big belly is the woman. Not the man. Man, you know, Santa's really skinny over here. You know, the man who plays Santa Claus is kind of skinny. He's got the big bushy beard. He's got some graying to do. His hair's not white enough yet, is, is it? See, Dean, that's why you have to live a long life because you have to. You have to. Look, you have to get as get your hair has to get as white as Santa Claus. See? Right. See? So you have. You're not gonna. You're not going to die soon, okay? You're not. He's not meant to die soon. He's meant to be my husband. I mean, I meet, you know, all the little kitties have to sit in the lap of a, an old guy, right? And they, they're not going to want to sit in my lap. I mean, you know, Mrs. Claus is just standing right by him, right? Right. Fixing his, his hair, right? Right. Bringing his little hot chocolate. Right. <laughs> Handing out, handing out or, cookies. Or his eggnog. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's that's the tradition, right? And you know, so we need, you know, because of our culture, we need we need a guy. But yeah, I'm the one with the with the big pot of gold right here. Okay. <laughs> if you ever wondered why I, I can't seem to lose my weight, I really think because I I'm most of my life I've been very thin. I'm a very petite woman. It's very thin. Um, I always gained and lost weight very easily but since, you know, I became menopausal and became postmenopausal and all that, you know, the hormones in my body have changed and I've, my body has hung on to the weight. I don't lose it as naturally as I used to. I guess your system kind of gets clogged up over time, you know. But I will lose it at the right time. But that's, if you wondered why I am fat, I guess I'm uh, on some level, spiritually speaking, um, my higher self is forcing me to stay fat because that's the embodiment of the truth, right? It's the, it's the woman who has the big belly, not the guy. The guy needs the big belly of the pot of gold before he can be Santa Claus. I mean, Dean Dean doesn't make a very good Santa Claus if he has nothing to hand out, right? He's just a guy with a bushy beard, and, you know, he's still he's still not white. His beard is still not white enough. It's going to take a few years, right? Right. What, until you're, like, 80? That's, like, 20 years from now, huh? Yep. So, Dean, you gotta li you got to live another 20 years, okay? Right. 
and all of you out there, all you guys, you know, who are waiting for me, you know, to leave my husband, it's not going to happen. Mrs. Claus is not Mrs. Claus without her Santa Claus. Not just anyone can be Santa Claus. It has to be the right guy. And this is, this is Santa Claus. Santa Claus has to have a certain art. Santa Paul. You, you, can't, you can't be just anyone. Santa Paul, you got to tell me what you Say it again. Tell them how you got so much weight. How I got what? So much weight? Some of your weight. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't really. Yeah, I didn't. That didn't occur to me just now. Yeah, a lot of the reason why I put on so much weight. I mean, I was on the way to losing it. You know, when I met you, and then Dean started feeding me. He, Dean, Santa Claus was the one who fat, fattened me up. Okay. Yep. Um, I know it was probably to take, you know, make sure none of the, none of those slick guys in L.A. or wherever else, you know, I'm sure you're trying to get, take me out of the limelight, right? <laughs> so nobody will steal no, you away. But I'm actually you a half star. I was, well, yeah, I was, but I wasn't skinny because I was, I still have way to lose, but... You know, I was living on what? I was living. I was living in a personal care home, trying to lose my weight. And the, the food they served at, at, at it's now closed, so I can say it's Ellen's. Um, they're they're shut down. He he was um, he he uh, went to jail, I think, and he now, he has he had can he, the guy the owner Weldon got cancer, and I don't know I I don't know how he is now, but. Yeah, they shut him down because he violated his license. Um, you know, he didn't he didn't treat me very well, so he got what he deserved, unfortunately, and I'm sad, but he did. And uh, I was, you know, the food at the at Ellen's was kind of southern cooking, and it was the kind of cooking that makes me fat. I mean, that's why I'm fat because I eat like my husband. Um. Mm. And so to lose weight, I was trying to live on a can of beans a day. I, I wanted Weldon to buy me a can of beans a day so I wouldn't have to buy it myself. And it was a can of beans, sometimes a salad, a side salad that I buy at the grocery store. Um, okay, so that was my protein. Was he a family or is he a Sometimes a salad. And what did I add? Oh, I added peanuts. I had, I counted the peanuts I put into my can of beans because this is all I could afford, okay? Because they they took almost all my money for rent um, at the time. And I, I couldn't afford much more than this. So, and, and that's why I wanted Weldon to buy me a can of beans, you know, because I wasn't eating any food. So, you know, he, when he's at the grocery store, just buy 30 cans of beans for Claire. And that's cheaper than feeding me the food they were feeding everybody. But I guess there were a couple times, excuse me, there were a couple times when I wanted to go off my diet and I started eat. I ate a couple meals with everybody else. And he saw that. And he, he told me, well, it's tough. I'm, I'm not buying your can of beans anymore. And I was like, why? You know? Anyway, so I couldn't afford to buy them myself. So I, I don't know. I, I just had to somehow manage. Um, but anyway, that's how I was doing. And I had lost some weight. And I, I was down to a certain weight. And then I met you. And you took me out. He fed me. Took me out to dinner and fed me, and it like was going, it was like, like his love. Out. You like going out to eat? Yeah, I do. I hadn't, I didn't have the money to go out to eat to a nice place. He took me to Scania's, which is a great barbecue place here in town. It's pretty famous, it's well known, and famous. Yeah, it's been here since 1956. It's been there since 1956, right near where we live. Um, ah. It was really great. I just really enjoyed that. And he took me out every week. Um, and, and pretty much, it's pretty soon, it was like every day. I mean, we'd go to Burger King, not nice restaurants, all the time. You know, 
it's just every so often we go to a nice one. But yeah. Or you go hang at your place if uh, we don't. Well, yeah. Go get, I used to go food. online at, at McDonald's. I, I We were introduced okay. in, at um, the Waffle House there on Peach Orchard. And we don't go there anymore because um, a waitress so rudely... Um, us we couldn't sit at an empty table because she was expecting her friends to come anytime and she told us we, we were there first it's first come first serve but she wouldn't she didn't she didn't want us to sit down and so we've been boycotting that um, location of Waffle House because of that so anyway um, but that's where we we met, and um, I believe we were officially introduced. We probably saw each other. I know I had seen you before then, and um, we passed cross paths a zillion times. But because Dean was very, um, he, he took a fancy to uh, the waitress who introduced us. He, he didn't notice anybody else. You know, that's the way Dean is when he's stuck on somebody, right? Um, you know. So anyway, the rest is history. Um, he followed me next door to McDonald's where I go online. He wanted me to put in an application for him over at, was it, was it Costco? And I was like, I'm sorry, that's something you need to do for yourself. And you need to go to the job center. I used to work over at um, the job center. Wait. No, I worked there later, didn't I? first okay yeah I told him, him he I didn't work there yet I thought I had but no I told him that he needed to take himself to um, what is it called job the job connection um, which is affiliated with Goodwill I used to work there and later I worked there after that time I told him he needed to go there and use their computers and do it for himself that it didn't seem proper for me to I just met this guy and he wanted me to do that for him and I just I, I asserted my boundaries, that's just how I felt at the time. And, um, but he knew where I was and he'd always stop by. I'd be there all day when I... That was before they started, they put up the signs that, that established a limit. <laughs> I'm probably the reason why that McDonald's put up the signs, because I was there all day and I would just like get an empty cup and fill it up with soda because I couldn't afford to buy it all the time and I would just refill it and refill it and it was Dean that made me that was worried that I'd get in trouble and he'd, he'd buy me a soda so that I wouldn't have to do it illegally and but I'm probably the reason why they put up the signs limiting people yeah <laughs> they have since renovated the place uh, I was very I had mixed feelings about the renovation I actually you know, I actually bumped into the owner and was talking to her about it. Um, but I, I really like it. it the original building um, was very special, but they, they used, it was, it was actually, she actually took my recommendation. I told her that and she, she was going to just tear it all down. And I told her, you know, uh, I've heard that I, sometimes insurance is better if you use the structure and you don't tear it all down. Like you just, you just renovate instead of, you know, you, you can demolish most of it and just right. use a few walls or right. something. And you know, sometimes the insurance is better. And I think she took my recommendation because that's what she did. She didn't. She was going to tear the whole thing down. But it's really nice what they did. I mean, if you didn't know the place from before, you, I mean, even if you did know the place from before, you don't, it looks like a totally different building. Yes. And that's where you asked me out on our first date. I didn't consider it a date, but you did. And it felt, it did feel like it. I remember Dennis, his twin was there. Yeah, it, it felt really good at the time because I had, it had been a long time since somebody had asked me out, you know, and it felt like that, but I was resistant, very resistant. Right, Dean? It took a whole year for him to break me down. But anyway, 
So, I guess what I'm saying, you, your question was, what do I, what is my favorite thing about Christmas? What, that will, it will, my, my favorite thing about Christmas is the joy associated with it, and, which is, you know, kids, children have that natural joy and wonder about Christmas that we adults forget, but, I will have that same joy and wonder when I get my money and, and can share that wonder and joy with all the children on earth. And Dean, Dean, Dean and I have a certain adoration of children. I mean, since I met him, he's always pointing out the little ones around. Isn't he big? Isn't she big? You know, and he's always going up to all the mothers. I'm sure they're all protective of their children. Wondering why this guy is so interested. I say, she's this many, or she's that many, or she's that many. <laughs> Right there. Yeah. He's a perfect Santa Claus, you know? He is. No, you're, you're meant to be a Santa. So, that will be my favorite thing about Christmas when I can finally be Santa Claus through Dean. With all my money and resources. Because no child on earth should ever go hungry, should ever be in need of shelter, of the basics of life, you know. And they should always have the love they need. You never get a package. Right, I mean... No matter what the package is, the one is you get a package. Right? Right, I mean, of course, I mean, you want them, you know, playing, you know, part of how children develop and into healthy adults is with play and they need toys, they, they need to use their imagination and when, when you, a child is in poverty and can barely, so, you know, it's, it's not, you know, sometimes that shuts down and, and then, then they grow up and, and they're unhealthy as adults and, and then they because hurt people. Because they're bad. Which we have. Right, I mean, it's really, play is very important to a child's development. It's the way that they practice being an adult. It's the way um, their brain forms to be prepared for adulthood and, you know, if they don't get that, they become criminals and, hey, how you doing? or they die. So, really, I mean, the way <laughs> to create world peace <laughs> starts with our children. <laughs> and I really... I'm really longing for the day when I can truly help children through all this planet. I'm, I'm longing for the day when I will be allowed to finally help and rescue all the children of the earth. That's why I came here. Rich people are highly educated. It's about being real do you have anything more to say, Dean? Well, I think what we miss most is about Christmas time back in the day when the crew was alive. Getting the whole crew together, seeing everybody, hanging out with everybody, having fun with everybody, and everything was fine. All that's gone now. It's not the same anymore. Well, Dean, yeah, Dean is very sad about, he gets very sad at Christmas. Every Christmas he's, he always has a moment of sadness because I guess you really, you, you felt very close to your grandparents, is that right? You weren't very close to your cousins or anything, were you? It was your grandparents. Which, which, was it the Boyds or? Both of them. Both of them. I think it was the Boyds more so than the Lintons, right? Or am I wrong? 
We might have the same interaction between both sides. I need some sweetener from the movie. Um, I don't know if I have any. Um, so you get really sad. See, I don't get sad. I don't, you know, my family, I, I know I, I'm better without them. <laughs> Even though I had really magical Christmases, Dean, that was something that Grandma Flanagan, my, my genetic mother, always made sure of, you know. <laughs> when, before my my parents when you know before my parents were stabilized financially you know I mean there was a time when we were not stabilized you know when we were poor I always say that's all poor time when my father was going to Harvard Business School in Lexington, Massachusetts we lived in a very puny little house and we, that we rented and I took Dean there once and um, is there any Splenda, the, the yellow package? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you got some? Thanks. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, long for my times with my family at all. I don't know. I, can I have that spoon just for a second? Um, yeah, those were magical. My Christmases were magical. And that had a lot to do with my mother. Yes, because Grandma Flanagan, her mother, trained her to be like that. Right. And yeah, it was magical. But I don't long for my mother. I just don't. I don't long for my mother. See, because I know the truth about them. When I was a child, I didn't. I had my. I was in denial, and I didn't want to know the truth. Because if I had known the truth, I wouldn't have been able to grow up properly. You know, it was when I became an adult that I finally faced it, and it was really difficult to do, but I had to. And I don't long for those times. Those times were my times. I kind of see them as my my experience, not theirs or ours. It was my experience. So they're, they're, they were part of that experience, but I don't long for them. I, I just need myself, and I can re-experience that in different ways with different people. You know, it doesn't have to be them. And, and that, it's my fortune that I'm able to see it that way because my family was so so bad and your situation maybe he didn't have that bad bad experience and so you don't naturally understand that and you get really sad and associate that experience that was your experience and your experience alone you associate it with them yes of course I miss certain people that were good influence I miss daddy terribly and others you know, he was, I'm talking about daddy, Jose Toda, or Fields, not Dennis Elliott. Okay. That's not my daddy, that's Danny. Daddy is Jose Toda, and I miss him terribly. I mean, I, I do, but the thing is that daddy is still with me. He's still, he's watching this right now. He's helping, helping my cause here on Earth. He, he's still in existence. He's still around. And, and yeah, he's not physically here sitting at the table. But he doesn't have to be, because I, I feel closer to him than that. It's not a physical closeness, it's, it's a spiritual closeness. And you can be closer to somebody spiritually than you can ever be to them. Physically, right. Physically. I mean, we're all physically separate from one another, you know. But spiritually, we can be one. 
there's nothing more intimate than spiritual life, you know, than it's the spiritual element of life. So it doesn't matter if somebody has died or somebody's no longer in your life or, you know, they can be with you in spirit more so, more intimately than they could ever be in body, you know. So that's really important for people to understand. And what's funny is, um, that can hold true for people who are in your life and let you down or whatever and they die. And for today, on the other side, they want to please their point. And try to have the oneness with you. Between you and the other side. Like your father. You were very close to your right. father. Okay. Now, I know his father, your father, is my my daddy. That was Jose Toda. That was Burfield. That's daddy. And that's why you were so close to him. And he, he nurtured him. Because I, see, the reason I know this is because daddy told me what he was going to do. And because I saw it, I was actually sh shown, I was, you know, they're, you know, they have computers in Vega and that's how they orchestrate everything. They do it by computer. I mean, there's no way that a human, one person can know everything about everything. It's, it's computers, a computer, a very vast, elaborate computer system beyond any computer we have here on earth that keeps track of everything and, and alerts the person at the monitor what's going on and, and that person, you know, looks into different things that come up and, and because there's no time in Vega, you know, there's no time, you know, everything's infinite, right? So you can just, you know, you can sit at the computer doing things forever and so it's not like you ever run out of time. So that's how you know everything. That's how, you know, a human brain can't know everything. But they do use my brain as the computer. It's kind of weird. I know that sounds really weird. But they do. They use my brain and they, I guess they create a computer organized like my brain. I mean, they literally take my brain though. It's really weird. And yeah, I guess we don't use most of our brain. You know, when I'm walking around, I, I don't know what's all in my subconscious mind, but when you put it in a computer forum, like they have in Vegas, and, and this brain runs the universe, right, supposedly? While I'm walking around, little me is walking around down here, you know, my brain is running everything. And thank goodness, you know, it's not some other deranged brain. I mean, we'd be all, we'd be doomed if it was some deranged brain. It's my brain, you know, and I keep things running pretty well. I mean... I, I think we let this Trump situation go a little, a little long, but you know, we're gonna fix that now. Um, but anyway, the point is that um, we don't use most of our brain, and I don't use most of my brain either. I use more than most people. No, we use. We use like 10% of our brain. I mean, I don't. Know. I don't know, maybe 10% is a large amount, for, like maybe I use 10 and most people use like 5 or something. I don't know. I don't know what, what the percentage is. You're going through life on autopilot. Meanwhile, your brain's sleeping, right? Yeah, that's the way it is for most people. Um, out of necessity, I mean, we can never keep track of everything in our, you know, it's just too much. It's too much information. But a computer can, and you put a brain in the form of a computer, and, 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 but that's how God knows it, okay? It's a computer that runs things, and it's a super, super computer, I mean, beyond anything we can imagine here on Earth. Um, that's how God takes, you know, construct everything. And so I saw Dean, I, I saw our, us in the future, and I remember this. So that's how I know, you know, it took me a while to remember. I mean, I didn't remember when I met him. <laughs> that's why I was like, it took me a while. And I gradually woke up and, and remember, oh yeah, oh my gosh, you know, and it, really it took him growing a beard. <laughs> Eventually, to for help to help me remember, you know. And he's also Noah from No 
his arc. He, you know, without the glass, we, we fixed his eyesight so he would uh, be blind. And he was younger, you know, we, we made him younger when he was Noah in the Bible. That really did happen. Okay, it really did happen. And, and it was that beautiful. Here, take, Dean, take off your glasses. Okay, so. Just imagine, okay, look out in the distance. This is the way I'm, no, no, put your head down and just like be, look, look towards me, at, like put your head up, look, look, you know, like you're on a, on a ship, on a boat, you're looking across the waters, look, like kind of look out the window like you're looking across the waters, you know, like put your head down, okay, like the wind is blowing, okay. Just uh, tighten up here. <laughs> imagine the sky like younger, okay? And and imagine the wind. His, his beard is longer, and the wind blowing, you know, blowing you know, over the over the ocean. <laughs> That's Noah. This is Noah. Um. Okay. That's Noah. And, and you know we have the ability to to um to make somebody put somebody back in time, make him younger, make him be able to see well. You know he's genetically he's blind, right? <laughs> he's been wearing you've been wearing glasses since age what two, three? Yeah. Yeah, but it wouldn't, you know, it, see, when he dies, we're going to do this. He hasn't done it yet. I was Oh, he was too. I was right. <laughs> see, I know things, and I don't realize I know it. Um, okay, so, you know, when he lives his life as my husband and then dies, he'll go back, you know, he'll go, go to Vega, heaven, and we're going to make him young again, and, and we're going to fix his eyes, and... We're going to put him back in time, in biblical times, and he's going to be Noah. We can do anything we want when we're, you know, heaven can do anything we want. It's really amazing. And, and the reason why, you know, there's no time. So, and in Neutron Buddhism, time is vertical, not horizontal. So it's not like a timeline. It's it's like everything's happening right now. Everything's happening simultaneously. It just stacks up. Right. Everything's happening simultaneously. So it's like, okay, you just jump up here instead of, you know, you're here, then you jump down here, you're down. That's how time travel happens. You're just going up and down. You're not going down. Everything's happening simultaneous. On our... Um, level of reality, it seems like everything like takes so long. It's like you're so drawn out, <laughs> and it seems like cause and effect are separate, you know. Because see, you know, when cause shows up, it's right here, and then the effect is way down the line if it ever even shows up during our lifetime, you know. It seems that way, it's an illusion, it's not the way it really is. So everything's happening simultaneously. And that's what Asian Buddhism has always taught. And uh, that's what's missing in Christianity and all, of, and all the other faiths. They, this, these, Nichiren Buddhism contains all the missing information from all the other religions. All the stuff that human beings threw away because they couldn't handle it, because they didn't want to face the truth, because men wanted to be in total domination of everything. Nietzsche and Buddhism is the container it went into. That's what God did. She put everything in Nietzsche and Buddhism that is you can't find anywhere else. And I can't chant the words in Nietzsche and Buddhism, but what I do is I say these words. I say, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Please forgive me. Oh, wait. I love you. It doesn't matter what order you say them in either, but I like to say them in this order. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. You're, you're saying I'm sorry to your higher self. To the higher self, your higher self. Everyone has one that knows better, okay? You as a little person here on earth, 
doing your best with your conscious mind, you know, we're, you're limited. And you make mis you're going to make mistakes, whether you believe that or not, whether your ego allows you to believe that or not. You're going to make awful, stupid mistakes. You're going to be a fool and an idiot all the time. Okay, Beth, and I'm sorry. Beth. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. That's what you say to your higher self, to the universe, to God, whatever you want to see it as. If you never make a mistake, you never learn an anything. You'd be the world's biggest knothead because you didn't learn anything. That's the whole point. That's how humans learn. That's the way our brain is wired. And actually, you know, it's not its not bad. I mean, it's actually good to make a mistake. If you're not making any mistakes, you're not learning. You're not learning. It's, it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you get back up. Right? It's how many times you get back up. Right? That's right. So, all I'm saying is that we have it all backwards here on Earth. When you make a mistake, Congratulations is what we should say instead of like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, good luck next time. Right, of course. Yeah, you don't want to keep making mistakes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, another mistake. Yeah, let me just make mistakes for the sake of making mistakes. No, but it's like, yeah, you made a mistake. Now you can learn what to do next time. Now you have more information. Right. You know, for next time, it's a good and thing. So next time you go to make a mistake, you make a different mistake. Right. I mean, then you're learning something new. Right. You see, when you're making a mistake, you're learning something new. Right. And that's the goal. Right. <laughs> you know? It, I mean, you don't want to, like, just do the same mistake again and again. You know? I mean, that's that's being a blockhead. <laughs> and what, the person who comes to mind when I say blockhead is uh, Danny Lynn Burkhead's father. I went to summer camp with him. What's his name? <laughs> um, Larry. Larry Burkhead. Blockhead. Daddy and I used to call him Larry Blockhead. Did he get a napkin? Huh? Did he get a napkin? Do I have a napkin? Did he get natural? Being a blockhead? I have a good I have a good blockhead. Um, yeah, it's a long story, and maybe I'll make a video about that one time. Yep. Some people have the uh, ability to be Very a blockhead. That's a good one to be a blockhead. <laughs> so anyway, that is our... This is a, not the video I expected, Dean. Very cute. Very much so. I, I just... It's better not to really adhere to any rigid guidelines, you know, like, I'm going to do this every day. This was much more interesting. In World War II, uh -huh. there was a bombing outfit. Yeah. And the German kids would be lined against the fence. Yes. Well, they start, the pilots were flying in and they saw the kids all lined against the fence, you know. They, uh -huh. you know the economy was bad. They couldn't. They, could, they, 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 they couldn't get a piece of bubble gum. They could uh, get a stick of candy or nothing. It's just, it's just the way it was. Uh huh. So one guy he ready right out there. He had them put all the pockets out of their, out of their, out of their pants. Uh huh. He got it back in the back in the bottom there. He dropped all his candy and gum, uh -huh. and the homemade parachutes, uh -huh. as they flew in, uh -huh. and as they came over the fence. All dropped drop down on top of them, and all the kids got they called him you know, the, the, um, the candy bomber. Oh, yeah, and then we're, we're getting back to the states. That's what we're doing, they're making parachutes, dropping the candy to the kids, and all these pretty, all these ladies selling these pretty silk napkins or whatever else they had. <laughs> uh -huh. Make parachutes to get is a, a great big, huge mail bag full of. Not those. Mm -hmm. Those little silk things we can make the parachutes with. Mm -hmm. And they talked to a girl who was there. Her name, her name was Mercedes. Mm -hmm. And she said she remembered 
being up against the fence and the plane flew over. They looked, she looked up, she saw the uh, parachutes coming out. And she was able to grab one of them. Yes, yes. Thing with Hey, you know, you're stand you know, you're sitting in front of the Coca-Cola sign, Dean. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, it's funny because Coca-Cola, this is a tr this is something uh, in my research I discovered. Um, do you know that Coca-Cola is is the the company that made Santa Santa Claus popular throughout the world? Oh, yeah. They were the first. They I don't know. I mean, from what I understand, there was no, I mean, I guess there was Father Christmas in Europe, right? I mean, it goes way back, but it wasn't until Coca-Cola came up with some, like, outfit for some Santa. Kind of no, they created Santa Claus, right. I mean, there was the, um, there was the legend of it in the world, but nobody, like, but they were the ones that popularized the current, um, Visual for Santa, you know, with the big guy with the belly, big guy, and the beard, right? And, right and, and and the costume, right. you know, the, the red, you know, they were the ones that made him what he, you know, that that popularized the, the idea you think of Santa Claus. They were the ones that did it, and obviously that was Daddy. You know, that's one of my companies. I know they they're a public company now, right? But they're one of they're, they were in our portfolio, and yeah, Daddy, just like he used Gerber for you know, made me the face of Gerber, and, and you know, made me the face of Copper Tone. Um, he made Santa, you know, he fashioned Santa, you know, uh, and made Santa the, the face of Coca Cola. Well, show me how to do it. Yeah. And that was Daddy's doing, you know, he, he fashioned it up. And it's interesting because if we look at the people around us, okay, I, I think of my grandma and I think of your mother. Your mother actually reminds me, she physically resembles my grandmother now, because she's now in her 80s, right? What, how old is she? 80, 84. And she has that white hair, and that's Santa Claus hair, okay? It's like Daddy took from different places in my life, okay? So there's your mother, who's got the white Santa Claus hair. And she has the belly, too. <laughs> I have the belly, though. It's my belly. My belly is, you know, she, your mother is wider than me, and she's bigger. She's She doesn't really have the belly. I, I'm, i like, smaller, and so that's... like you said... Good for you and her is she was a born birther. Right, she's a she's a birther. She's a big big bigger woman than me. Yeah, she was a she would be a birther. Yeah, right. She's got the big frame, and me, I'm I'm petite, so I'm kind of like drowning in my fat, and it has nowhere else to go but my belly, and I'm, I got this big belly going, and that's Santa, the Santa Claus belly. So I've got the Santa Claus belly. Um, you got the beard and. You know, blue, uh, well, it was my grandmother who had the blue, blue eyes. Blue, blue eyes, right? My, my genetic mother. And, and the, the, fro the, the red, the red little cheeks, and thank you. Red little cheeks, um, who, who, uh, there's, I remember thinking that, I think I saw your, your, I don't know, I saw somebody with rosy cheeks and, I was like, I don't know, that reminds me, you know, like he took it from different people surrounding me. And oh, the, the, the cane, that's that's Dennis. He, he walks with a cane all the time because he's got this balance issue, right, since his accident in 2016. I mean, this is how all of these things came to be. I mean, Daddy took it from our life today. And, you know, you think of Santa Claus and all the little things from a long time ago. But he took it from our life today, and then he put it back in history. What did it remind you of? Right, it's like he, he was basically, you know, I'm Santa Claus. Okay, I'm Santa Claus. In 2020. I mean, well, I I won't be Santa Claus. I mean, it's you, it's for you that I'll be Santa Claus. Right now, I'm not, because I don't have my money. Without my money, I'm, I'm just this, like, crazy little woman, wife of the southern named Dean here in Augusta, Georgia. You know, I, I'm like a kooky weirdo. <laughs>
without my money, you know? With all my stories, all my remembrances and memories and, you know, what a crazy lunatic, you know? That's what I am without my money. a lot of people who've been... Now I keep looking into... Taking away, taking away from the money, just like you. I know, I mean, I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the first one. Believe me, I'm just here... I know, this is what happens in the CIA. They steal all these women's money and people like starve to death or die or whatever and people steal their money this is the way it's done and and I'm it's me we had to put an end to it sometime right I mean God wasn't gonna like sit and let this happen on earth forever it's me who's going to put an end to it okay and you know the end is here it's a new world okay I mean did you think we we're just gonna let it go on and on forever and ever no, I, and you know, all you guys that are guilty of all this sin and corruption, you, you know, you think you're getting away with it? That's a delusion. You are delusional. I know everybody likes to say, oh, Claire's delusional. Payback. You're delusional. And yeah, payback is a bitch, right? Payback is a, payback is a bitch. A big seven foot tall dyke. <laughs> yeah. Listen to him. He's right, and it, you know, I at least I have a clean slate. At least I I know I'm, you know, I've done everything I can, and I'm still I'm hanging in there. And thank goodness for me, I, I keep this world going. But you know, I don't have anything to show for it, and it's all of you corrupt idiots who do. And for you have you you have you get the credit and the money and the fame that this must be mine right you're stealing it you're siphoning it off and you think that god gave that to you do you think do you think that god thinks that's fine i mean do you think satan is god or something i mean god can't sit and watch that forever and ever i know you've been wondering where the hell god is you know you've been getting away with this for so long god is letting you dig your deep deep grave. I mean, you, you're going to have to, when you die, you're going to have to face the truth. And you're not going to be very happy with the truth when you die. Unless you, you know, but while you're still alive, you can save yourselves. You know, you can't depend on anybody else to save you. Jesus is not going to save you if you can't save yourself. But, do you have anything more to say about that? Yeah, you know, like you said, you have to save your own self. Right, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what this thing is about Jesus. Oh, yeah, we can do anything we want. Jesus will save us, you know, Jesus, you know, Jesus can do it, you know, he can, like, make up for everything and we, we can reap all the benefits. <laughs> I mean, isn't that insane? That's insanity. You are delusional if you think that. It starts with you. You are God in your own life. I can't be God in your life. Only you can be God in your own life. Don't forget that.